let's go ahead and talk about this article here um, since we're on a topic of uh, Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, this is from coming to us from Bounding into Comics. All right, flashback. Western devs panicked over a high quality of Baldur's Gate 3 ahead of a release wanted players to view the game as an anomaly rather than the new standard. Yeah, so basically this game is doing so well. I'm not sure if it has any bugs or anything like that or anything that's game breaking. I don't think it has any like, uh, you know, pay to win gotcha mechanics. At least I don't see anything yet. But yeah, man, I'll be, be, before we move forward, um, Ryan, um, since, since you, um, you know, we, we both worked in the game, you know, game industry and stuff like that, knowing right. development and stuff like that. I'm not sure if you want to elaborate more uh, upon your background. That's up to you if you don't want to. But sure. uh, how do you feel about this? Um, I, I had an initial question. I'm wondering, uh, do you guys know what exactly they're worried about? Is it because this game has so much freedom in it and like they're worried about that becoming the new standard? Like what, what are they tripping about with this? Gray, you want to you want to elaborate? The developers say that it shouldn't be a new standard because they are an outlier, which is incredibly ridiculous because the developers that are actually complaining or that are actually saying that they are much bigger in in size and in develop in in terms of manpower and in resources that are saying that. Oh, and yeah. yeah. They're and basically they, saying that that the game is because the game is doing so well, it's selling so well, especially with word of mouth. The game is has incredible like voice acting. The animation's incredible. Okay. Uh, the game is good. The music is good. It's just an overall a great game. There's like I, nothing I, wrong with it. There's basically. nothing wrong with it. So so is, is that what the anomaly is? I I, I still don't understand because it, yes, if, it if being problem, too good. Okay okay. Well well then that's dumb, my dude. That should be the new standard. We we want our content and you know including gaming related stuff to be good to be good quality. Uh, to be received well, you know, we want the quality and the standard to go up so that people can can try and, and go for that, right? We, we want to push the limits of this industry. So, you know, the idea that, you know, this game performing so well, having the great voice acting and the graphics and the gameplay, whatever, you know, uh, turns people off or people are like, no, like, you know, like we don't want that to become like a, a, a new normal. That That's ridiculous. That sounds lazy. And that's uh, kind of frustrating, actually. Um, you know, thinking about it, we 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 want people to be working harder within the, within this industry to push those grounds. So that mm -hmm. that doesn't make much sense to me. It, it sounds like people are afraid of competition, maybe, um, and that's that's lame. Yeah, it's because like um, you have studios like uh, you know, someone mentioned like Bethesda, and you have a CD Projekt Red and stuff like that. Like like at launch, like Cyberpunk was really really bad. You can't even play the game. There's one time where like a person actually looks like a like a PS2 like character. Right. right. It took him how long for them to fix the game, right? I'm not sure how long did it take, but it took him a good while to fix the game. Mm -hmm. So, and then you have smaller studios like Larian Studios, or or maybe even the, the the folks that made Hades. You know, like that 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 game did really really well. You know, like this game that took six years to make, and it's like really good out of the box. And they're and these studios are like, yo, like. You know, j just because they did it doesn't mean we have to do it. You know, like, like for, for instance, case in point, I'm playing Diablo 4 right now. Right. And when with, with Blizzard, um, there's a lot of issues when the game started, right? And because, you know, it's a live service thing that has a battle pass and, yeah. and stuff like that. You know, we understand. You, you're trying to make money here. But right. the thing is, when Season 1 came out with the Malignant Heart stuff came out, it, the game... They completely nerfed all the characters, a shit ton of bugs, and it didn't really work. And they had to do an emergency, like camp, like you know, campfire side, like talk, saying that, yo, we fucked up, you know, like we mess, we mess things up, you know, we will, we, there, there will never be a patch that's gonna be like this in the future. Like we're right. sorry, you know, okay. like it's because they had to do something like that, and then like everyone's apologizing. Oh, sorry that our game is trashed. You know, like the the the, the, the studio that did um, what's it called again? Uh, Gollum. Right. right? Yeah. The studio uh -huh. did the Gollum. The, 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 the studio that did um, what's it called again? A Forspoken. You're like yeah. all of them had to come out with some kind of apology, saying sorry, our game sucks. Right. Like so, like, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're a triple A studio, and, and a tiny ass studio comes out of nowhere. Well, this studio is, is sort of known, but now this Baldur's Gate is considered a triple. Th this this game put them on triple A status. Right. 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 And as a big studio like Blizzard, who has billions of dollars, you know. Fucking Bobby, you know, just yo, yo, I just want to buy a boat. Yo, give me another yacht. <laughs> you know, Bobby Kodak is like, oh, I don't care how the game runs. Is it making money? Is right. it making money? Right. right. 
So right. that, that's all they fucking care about. So the fact that you have this studio is like, oh shit, now we actually need to make good games. Fuck. Okay. So it's that okay. that's what they're afraid of. So so I mean, Philip, you, you that was very well said. You said that beautifully. You know, I don't really need to add any more, but that's you know, I, I completely agree. And, and and yeah, man, I mean, like that's you know, it's 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 like you said, uh it's it's like a competition thing. So you have this studio now that's you know relatively new or not as known or whatever, um, and they put out a good product. Um, you know, on the first go, that's amazing. We have so many games, you know, these days that come out and they, you know, they, they release their, their service or product, whatever, and then it's not great. And they have to rely on patches and, you know, uh, they have to apologize and do all these things. It's sad. And that's not what we want from the gaming community, from the gaming industry. We, we want, you know, the leaders of the gaming industry to be putting out great content because that's that's good for everybody. And that pushes the boundaries. So, um, nah, man, I mean, it, it sounds like people are just kind of like whining and, and that's pathetic. Um, and I'm happy that, you know, this studio is showing that, you know, you don't have to be, you know, crazy, you know, as, as big as these giant studios to put out great content. You know, it puts pressure on them to do better and, and to excel. And by the way, um, I know some, you know, studios put out games that, you know, are definitely more on the woke side, you know, in, in different aspects. Um, and so, if you know, especially if this game is not so much doing that and, and you know, if they're not blatantly trying to, uh, you know, pander or whatever and they're doing well, then, then I'm all for it, man. And I'm, I'm a supporter even if I don't play it. Like, that's that's great. That's what we want. So it sounds like a win to me. Yep. All right. Yep. Um, let's go ahead and uh, read this article. Let's see. In the light of the game's runaway success, it seems appropriate to note that the, before the game's full release, the sheer quality in Baldur's Gate 3's promotional material was enough to spark worry amongst Western developers over the possibility that it could be considered the medium's new standard. And that looks pretty fucking good, man. Let's yeah. see. Um, based on the 5e edition of Dungeons and Dragons and helmed by Divinity developers Alarian Studios, Boulder's Gate 3 follows the tales of the player's own customizable avatar, a fledgling adventurer who found themselves captured by the subsequently infected by the monstrous, uh, I think is Illithid amidst their recently uh, launched invasion of uh, of the far, far run continent. So, uh, chat. I I, the, I would think that's Feyrun. Feyrun? Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, eventually, finding themselves free of their imprisonment, the player's character set out not only to remove the parasites, the mind flayers left within their uh, his body, but also do what they can to shut down their plans of conquest, which is uh, pretty cool. I have no ideas about like mind flayer stuff, you know, like Cthulhu-looking characters. Uh, boasting such features as completely customizable party, single player, and multiplayer options, and an overall polish that has been missing from many Western games in recent years. It's easy to see why Baldur's Gate was, sorry, Baldur's Gate 3 was considered by many to be one of their most anticipated titles of the years. However, this excitement was not shared by Larian Studios' peers as the weeks leading up to the release of Baldur's Gate 3, a number of Western video game devs clearly aware that the game had the substance to support its surrounding hype, responded to the studio's accomplishment with panic Come the disconnect on. with uh, was first brought to widespread attention by El Paso, uh, everywhere and space warlord Oregon trading simulator developer, I think Javalier Nelson Jr., who on July seventh, uh, July seventh, tweeted, "Quote: Like a lot of people, I'm deeply excited about what the lovely folks at Larian accomplished with Baldur's Gate 3, but I want to gently, preemptively push back against players taking that excitement and using it to apply criticism." Or a raised standards by RPGs going uh, to RPGs moving forward. Wow. Yeah, this guy's like, yo, man. Um, yo, we all know that Baldur's Gate three is fucking popping off, but you can't compare that to my RPG game, man. <laughs> like, don't do that, man. Look, you know, look, like, <laughs> look, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell y'all one more time, man. You know, if if this is truly someone hating on how well the game was like made. Then, then that is so pathetic. It, it's one thing, right? If you have like a new game where it's like it's like a very interesting style or a type of gameplay, and then people are like, "Oh, we don't want like people to have expectations that every new you know game in this genre is going to be this style, you know, this kind of style or look like this or whatever." You know, that's one thing. You don't want all games to be the same and people to be comparing it, you know, based off of one style. But if it's just about how well it was done, 
you know, it, it doesn't have to be a triple A title like to be a well done game. You can you can have plenty of like two D games and you know kind of indie you know looking games or whatever that can be super fun and do well for for, for its audience or, and for what it was made for. But I you know, dude, there, there's no way these guys can be complaining that oh because of you know because it was so well done because of what they executed it was so well executed, you know that they're hating. I man, I refuse to believe that man. That that would be so sad. Yeah. Uh, Gray, yeah. what, what was that game that you recently played? The RPG one, the like really cartoony one that you said is really good. <laughs> I I don't know which one you're pertaining. Okay, to. Uh, wh which of the RPG games that you just recently uh you're, you are playing right now, or you finished playing? Oh, you mean the video I just uploaded today? What Scarlet game is that? Texas? Scarlet Texas. No, uh, I, I think it's a previous one. I forgot which one it was, but I heard like. Like it's just like the <laughs> like like yeah you you you're playing so many RPGs games <laughs> yeah that, but, oh oh yeah yeah I chained echoes chain echoes that's the one yeah I heard yeah. like it's basically like it doesn't have to like the game is just really good right yeah so like yeah. How, how do you feel about this guy this guy yo this guy has one out of ten <laughs> <laughs> one out of ten oh my god Gray what do you think yeah it's like I don't know it's like. I don't know if it's like their shareholders or investment managers telling them to say that. It's like it's these like these companies they're so corporatized. Like yeah, it's it got tainted by like the likes of BlackRock and Vanguard. It's like oh, I just want to put season passes in there. I just want to put microtransactions so I can make more money. Then it 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 becomes like a churn rate. It's like oh, you have to keep pumping out these new games every X amount of years. Kind of like the sports games. It's become like that. Then all of a sudden, here comes this new challenger that sets uh, sets a new bar, innovates in every way possible, and now they they're, they that's why they feel threatened. It's like they they're out of their comfort zone, so it's like they have to good. So they're yeah, they have to they have to trash talk about no, no, this shouldn't be the standard. It's too hard. It's because it's because you're corporatized so much. It's like there's so it's the hierarchy is so. It's full of people who just want to make money that you cannot wiggle your way out of it anymore. You can't, there's no room for innovation. That's why they're like that. Yep. And, and also what probably it's not being pointed out, not yet being pointed out. It's they like to criticize the customers. It's like, yes, you're not a game, you're not a game developer. You don't know what it's like to develop a game. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. I have never written a line of code in the game development. But if I am on an airplane and if the engine is on fire, I know there's something wrong. I don't need to be a pilot to know that. Yeah, so it's the same. It's the same thing as video games. If it's if I feel like there's something wrong or something lacking, and here comes this other game that's really really good, I will be able to determine that this should be the new standard. I don't need to be a game developer to know that. You know, you know what you like. You can tell if it's a good experience or not. It's as simple as that. That that was very well said, Greg. Thank you, man. Yeah. Well yeah. So someone, yeah, someone here says best RPG in 15 years. Yeah, man. Wow. Like, so so far, yeah, I'm really really enjoying it, and I've only just like scratched the surface. But let's continue with this. Yeah. So asserting that quote, you can't separate a game from the process you used to build it. Uh, Nelson Jr. then sought to temper players' future expectations by taking a quote look at what Larian is taking into development and the final versions of the game. Okay, he continues the dev cycle stretching back to 2017. Two massive games and their the, uh, definitive editions worth of tech and institutional knowledge to draw from. Three, super successful early access period lasting three years, providing crucial community feedback, bug hunting, and cash flow. There it is. So why can't you why can't the studios do that then? Why don't you just lead by example? Like, bitch, I work in a game development company, okay? So I know I, I know shit. I know it's hard to make video games, however. It, but if you know what works, don't try to fix it, right? If the code works or whatever it works, don't try to fix anything, all right? Like, just lead by example. Follow, what, follow what's good. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a quote that said, you know, and it's used for everything. A rising tide raises all boats, right? This also breeds competition. If your competition is good, Right. If your competition is good, that means it sort of makes you want to be better. Right. Now, if this if Larian Studios is raising all the tides, that means that in you know, if your boat sucks, you're gonna fucking sink. Yep. There yep. it is. Is that is that simple? It's like these these developers are so stupid. Now let's continue. There's another one, number four out of ten. 
Over 400 developers in a, a seven different offices around the world, not including outsourcing partners. Five, the licensed brand and the world of one largest uh, entertainment IPs in the world, a DD d at the apex of its popularity with the rise of actual play move, uh, movement and movie. So here's the thing. I'm going to use Blizzard as an example. Blizzard has been around for a long, long time. Okay. Whenever, of course, prior to like Diablo 3, whenever there's a Blizzard game com coming out, like WoW, like World of Warcraft, when that, how popular was WoW? Like how popular was World of Warcraft? It was insane. People Crazy. were all lining up outside, you know, insane. right? And then where the hell is BlizzCon now? Nowhere to be seen. Seen better yeah. days. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, with the most recent acquisition from a Microsoft that bought out Blizzard and Activision, right? Mm -hmm. Overwatch 2 is now on Steam. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Right? Right? Yes. And I'm going to look it up live right now. What Overwatch 2's uh, sort of reviews are? What, what do the fans it's, think about the game? It's bad, right? I, I remember seeing something about that. It, it's been overwhelmingly bad so far as far as Steam goes. Yeah. And, and the thing is that what's worse with everyone, including myself, you know, I used to play Overwatch 1. Um, Overwatch, Overwatch 2, I was looking forward to PvE because I like the PvE stuff. Right. Yeah, me too. Me too. Actually. Okay. So, all right. I'm going to, I'm going to share the screen over here. So let's say I'm going to stop, I'm going to stop presenting this one re really quick. And I'm going to share my uh, window. Let's see. The shoot. Is that it right over here? Yep. Can you say, can you guys see that? What's it yeah. say? All reviews. What does that say Ooh. over there? Overwhelmingly Ooh. negative. 90,000 reviews. That's wild. My God. Yeah. Right. It's insane. That's unfortunate. Right? And, and, and that's not you in excluding... This is just a game in general, not excluding PvE, because everyone was super hyped for PvE. But now, like, you have Larian Studios that's coming out with a banger. It's like, doesn't that want you to be a better development, like, company for video games? Right, it's 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 so stupid, right? It, it's it, it, it. Anyway, let's continue. Admitting that this list was a small and incomplete, Nelson Jr. explained, Larian is coming out with the, uh, into this game swinging with a gigantic weight of expectation to deal with, but they're also doing it with an immense amount of wind. Yeah, because this if this game has been out for for it, uh, well, it's been six years, right? Since 2000, 2017. they've been uh -huh. developing it. And then for a while now, and then it's okay. We have a playable state. Let's let's put this like beta or early access out to see what the people think, right? And then that's where these these were will be considered your beta testers, right? Free access, early access. You know, um, they they did that with Diablo Four. You know, you got early access. People were able to play it early, and then you know provide feedback. You know, oh, this is what we like. This is what we didn't like. You know. And if you if, if you're saying oh D and D was a, you know is 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 a big is a big brand it wasn't back in the day in the eighties is considered the devil's game it was considered satanic right right so mm -hmm. and, and 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 a lot of folks might still believe that to be satanic right to to to, to be you know uh you know a, a devil's game but the thing right. is this this game is just good overall so just how about just make better shit you mm -hmm. know I don't I know agree. great what do you think so far. Yeah, I don't know. They're just they're just trying to cope. But I, my only hope is that um more developers step in to do the same thing so that these big big triple A ones will be forced to innovate in some form. It's like to the point that I have to hope that I want to hope that it's cannibalizing on their actual sales. Mm. Like we're sick of your rinse and repeat games. Um, um we, I've had enough the innovation or nickel and di nickel and diming me at every turn you get. So I'm I'm switching over. I, I'm done with buying your games. Why why mm. should I settle for less if I can get more from these smaller developer development team? That's yep. how I see it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Man. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and by the way, if they, you know, if they want to stay in the game, if they want to stay competitive, then like you guys said, they have to adjust. If if they don't want to, you know, put out good titles or you know, adjust accordingly to what the gamers want, to what people are leaning more into now, they don't have to, but you know, it is what it is. Yep. 
All right, let's continue. As a uh, too long didn't read summarize Nelson Jr. Quote, in an era of mega games, Boulder Gates 3 is one of the largest attempted built by a specialized group of people using mature tech speci uh, specifically built to make this a specific game reinforced by invaluable mass player feedback and market validation ahead of its launch. Well, I'm pretty sure Diablo had this. Diablo 4 had this. Diablo, Dia like whether you like, whether you like Diablo 4 or not, it's probably one of their biggest games in a long time. Right. 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 They, they, they probably make a shit, made a shit ton of money on it. And, uh, you know, th th this goes off of, I'm pretty sure when Diablo Immortal came out, they, they didn't have Diablo 4 in a state where they can show it. I'm pretty sure right. like they're probably in development. And that's why they're like, oh, let's talk about Diablo Immortal instead. Right. So now that you have Diablo 4 that's, that's come out, you know, like the game is probably not going to get better until like season 11. Right, because it takes a while a, for, for a the game to, time. To, for the game to get good. That's a really long time. Okay, <laughs> it's a lot of seasons. Yeah, let's see. Quote: uh, This is not a new baseline for RPGs. Uh, this is an anomaly. This is what he said. Trying to do the same thing in uh, the same way, especially without the same advantages, could kill an entire group of studios. Wow. Well, not for Larry and Studios, it didn't. Like it's it's like if you're good at making a game, why don't you just continue making it? Like, I'm pretty sure. The people at Capcom are good at making fighting games. Right. They just continue making Street yeah. Fighter. Street Fighter 6 made a shit ton of money. Right. Same Capcom, thing. Yeah. Capcom is a good uh, 180 because like they were they were kind of falling apart in the PS3 and 360 era. But when they changed their mindset to more customer centric, like give everything that the gamers want. And they've been killing it ever since. Every yep. game they came out was a banger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Imagine every it, game. Yeah, imagine pleasing your audience, pleasing your uh, player base. Hey, you want this? All right, we'll put it in. You don't want loot box? That's not going to be in it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just that simple. Oh, you want you want thick thighs that save life? We're going to make sure Chun Li uh, is looking good, right? Man, yeah. You want you, you want some thick ass cami uh, cami cheeks? You know, we're going to put that in there for classic costume. It's it's just they know what they're doing, right? Yeah. And be because of the money they're making, they can now take risks, kind of like Exo Primal. Maybe it's not, I know it's not so well, really well received right now, but it gave them the room to try new things, which is always a good thing, in my opinion. Yes, yeah. innovation. Let's see. Um, if they go as big or bigger with their next title, Larian themselves could die. <laughs> <laughs> That's, oh my God. It's like, yo, if the game is too good, their studios can die if they continue making it better. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you guys. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just, I just don't feel bad about that, man. It's like, like you have to adapt. That, that's really it. It's, you know, like it's not anybody's job to make sure that the other studios are doing okay. Every, it's, you know, you, you just want to make a good game and please the, the audience and your customers. That's it, man. Like, you know, I mean, that, that's obviously wildly like crazy to think. But even mm -hmm. if that was to be true, then, then do something about it, man. Like, get good. I'm, yeah, exactly. I'm, so, I'm so sick of these kind of attitudes where it's like, well, always me. And it's like the, the whole victim mentality, man. Like, you know, that's what it reminds me of. And it's, yeah. it's frustrating, man. I, I, I'd be getting mad. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah this, is, this is so stupid. Let's see. We are an industry dangling elephants over cliffs, pointing at those uh, that the ones that don't collapse under their own weight as indictment, indictment, whatever. Um, to ones uh, that that do so, please celebrate the achievement represent. Uh, rep yeah, represented by Baldur's Gate three, the dev ultimately concluded his lengthy thread. It looks like a massive amount of effort is about to pay off in a big way for one of the brightest voices in the medium. But if you shout that every RPG should be like this moving forward, you have no no excuse. <sighs> I see. You have not just missed the point. You have created the expectations and conditions to ensure your favorite creators may never be able to give you the thing you love ever again. Wow. Holy. <laughs> That's bold. <laughs> Holy you know what? You know what? They're, they're, they're very ballsy to be making these claims. I'll, I'll give them that much at least. Like They're, they're really selling it. I, it. It's still ridiculous in my mind, but they're, they're, they're really trying to sell it. That's, that's crazy. All right, wow. here we go. Speaking, yeah, indictment. Yeah, true and real. That, that, that's how it's said. Let's see, here it is. Following the conclusion of his threat, Nelson Jr.'s cautionary would receive an outpouring of support by various Western devs. You're absolutely right, said developer for uh, the Diablo 4 senior designer, Chris Bowser. 
Even if you look at one of, of is it Vinky's uh, touchdowns, Ultima 7, that's a game that had 12 years of prior games feeding into it. Uh, if it were to look at this uh, as a new benchmark, we would need to then focus on creating conditions just uh, like with uh, TOTK. Yeah, so basically Diablo's like, yo, our game is trash, but make sure this, you know, this, you know, this, this, this is this is a one-off. This never happens. Oh man, I was just dicking on uh, Diablo, man. Now, now, yeah, yep, there it is. He continues, but people too often look at the fruits of labor and not the labor itself. Same as if uh, ever was, I guess. Same deal with people wondering why there are so few artists painting like Renaissance masters. Well, because it's uh, a lot harder to do that, and, and people are just idiots. Now, <laughs> the thing is, saying that. Uh, the fruits of the labor and the fruits of itself, uh, as ever was. So here's the thing. If you actually give the artists or the studios time to actually do what they do best, you'll get stuff like Sonic. When, for, when Sonic first came out, it looked fucking awful. <laughs> right? It looks fucking awful, dude. It's right. like, what is the, what is this thing? You know, we, you know, yeah. we have, where's Sonic? We have Sonic at home. And then you see yeah. that fucking creature. Yeah. The movie. And then, <laughs> you know, that the people complained. And then now you have Sonic one that that was highly received of course the people were just i didn't really care for the people sonic 2 was pretty good and then sonic 3 is people are super excited for shadow um look man uh i might be the minority but i still kind of think that that was a whole sham i i think that that was a they did it on purpose i i think they did it on purpose bro for promotions man um mm. it, it was just, it was so bad bro like that was not sonic at all. it was so bad that i refuse to believe that that's really what they went for and that they were going for um you know uh they put in a lot of work like to even show that so i feel like it would have been a very costly sham for them but somewhere in my mind bro i'm like yo like like there ain't ain't no way um yeah but but, but your point is correct your, your point is very well received yeah let's see all right let's continue let's see quote i would not be surprised if it was more dev effort than the next two or three games in the genre combined uh, opined Xbox senior programmer James Berg. It's rock star level nonsense for scope. Uh, only a few studio uh, studio groups could even try this. I cannot wait to play, but this kind of effort likely won't be replicated this decade. Okay, that's wow. okay. That's from Xbox senior programmer. Okay, here's another one. Great thread. Praise Fallout New Vegas director Josh Sawyer. Quote: The conditions under which Baldur's Gate Three was made are atypical. This is in no way a slight against the game or the people working on it who are clearly passionate and talented. Having the foundation set and the funding to build this, uh, sorry, build things on your own terms is invaluable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ba basically, um, they're like, yo, um, I want to make sure that I have, uh, you know, pay time off so I can like do other stuff, you know, and, you know, if, if our shit's it. I think people are okay if you push your games back to make sure that the game come, comes out correctly, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, what do you think, Gray? What do you think about these pieces of shit that are coming out and basically saying that, oh, um, you know, Boulder's Gate Three's, uh, you know, amazingness is, uh, you know, it, 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 sh it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's kind of, it's like an envy. It's like because the companies they work for, they don't have that kind of flexibility. I suppose, right. like, they have to please that. 80 year old investor who never held a controller it from Vanguard. That that's why. So, so they have to have, it's like even if they say, please give us time to actually have do things the way we want. And that, that hedge fund manager, no, I want more money. That, that's probably what's happening. So that's why their only way of copium is to express frustration in that's like through doing this, like through shooting them down. Yeah. It's like, no, we, we, we don't have the flexibility. That's not possible. It's because of those kind of people. Like they're, they're, they cannot um they cannot persuade or convince them that please make us do the games we want. So instead of being that way, looking at it that way, they lash out at Larian instead. It's like, yeah. It's like that's what I also that's why Larian has such a good future. It's like unlike CD Project Red, the CEO is like, no, I'm not looking for the company to get acquired by these big companies or these big um investment companies. Um we I still want to do all I want is to keep making good games. So Larian is definitely has a bright future. It's like it's not gonna be like a CD project red where they got so arrogant with Witcher and then they released Cyberpunk. I don't I don't think it's gonna be that way because yeah, the CEO's heart is in the right place. That's how I see it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so, so Ryan, you know, like, I, you know, both of us been in QA before, you know, imagine if like, you know, maybe, maybe three of those years is just worth QA because like, there's a lot of games right now that are coming out that are broken, you know, th things are like, you know, they e either crash, you know, that the, the severity of these like bugs or like, you know, right. you know, balances and stuff like that. Like QA is, you know, look, look to pound on in, in you know, uh, 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 you know, everyone hates QA. You know, mm -hmm. people who work who, who work in the game de uh, game development, I, they hate QA people. But I have the most important I've heard stories. It's I, true. I, I, I have heard stories like you have to experiment, like you have to jump ten thousand times to, to see if something goes wrong, stuff like that. Right? So right. it sounds fun when you're in the outside and you've never had experience, but when you're actually in, oh, I don't, I don't want to do this, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, QA yeah, is rough, I, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, cool. Let's continue. Let's see. It should be noted that despite these devs disingenuous and frankly insulting attempts to frame the discourse as such, players are not looking at Baldur's Gate 3 and walking away with a desire for every game to be a large-scale blockbuster epic. Rather, players are hoping that the game uh, ushers in a new standard of quality control, medium-wide, particularly amongst the player, uh, sorry, bigger studios such as Bethesda and Ubisoft, whose titles in recent years, despite having massively inflated, have steadily trended towards being more buggy, broken, and borderline unplayable than one would ever expect uh, retail releases. It's funny that the Xbox person actually said it. Who's this bitch again? Uh, let's see. Um, this this guy, um, Josh, right? No, no, James Berg. Uh, how was Redfall? Mm -hmm. Yeah, how was Redfall? Mm -hmm. I, I wonder if that game was like buggy as hell or it was like a perfect game that no one complained about, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's continue. Yeah. Rather, players are hoping that the game... Okay, we read that shit. Okay, yeah, essentially not all video games need to be genre-defining in their production, but for goodness sake, at least release them in a working state. Yes. Okay. Um, like, like I said again, um, I, used to, I used to be a part of Activision QA and Disney Interactive QA. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a reason why you work 18 to 18 hour shifts from time to time. Yeah. Because you want to make sure your game is functional, right? You want to make sure your game works. You want to make sure that your game doesn't, doesn't look like a piece of shit. Um, but, uh, Ryan, you worked in QA before, correct? Yeah. Um, how, how do you feel about this? I'm pretty sure like most of it, most of these like complaints about these studios is because they want, okay, we're going to. This game needs to be out by 2024 Q1, and we have right. to make sure we reach that. And if we, because if we push back and if we go to the next year, our our ESG money won't be coming in. So, um, how, how do you feel about this? Uh, coming from a person who worked in QA before. Yeah, man. So I've uh, let me see. I have a pretty extensive QA background, and um, I actually also started off at Disney Interactive Studios doing uh, game game testing, uh, consoles, uh, mobile, PC, all that kind of stuff. Right. So. I have some experience testing actual gameplay, and um, I can tell you, man. I mean, it's 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 important, right? You know, one of the older examples that I have would be uh, Sonic 06, right? That game came out. It was supposed to be very promising, and um, it had so many bugs, it just ruined the entire experience. E even the good parts of the game that you know people did enjoy eventually, um, you know, at, at at jump, it was just like everybody had so many bad things to say and they couldn't even reach those points of the game because of the bugs. So, yeah. uh, I, I mean, I, I think we have plenty, you know, I, I think it's pretty obvious and it speaks for itself why, you know, you want to have good quality testing on the game and actually spend time in that phase because, you know, if people can't play the game, if it looks bad, you know, if, if it's like, you know, really hurting the gameplay experience, then it's going to get poor reviews. You know, like I think it's, it's obvious. Um, so for this game, um, uh, I think it's clear that they obviously had very good uh, or they spent a lot of time with that testing. Right. Um, you know, we didn't hear anything where it was like, hey, you know, we, we can't e even play the game or, you know, it, it's tough to do this or that or whatever. Right. So like that, that's already good in itself. Um, but but yeah, like like I said, we, we have examples to where uh, the quality of the game, even if like, you know, um, if you like, let's say you had a perfect playthrough right and uh, you didn't run into any bugs and you would have fun and you would enjoy it and it'll be great but you know for the games that did drop and you know they had to do fixes and patches and, and do all these things and um you know everybody was complaining about these different uh you know like just bugs um that that just it, it takes the game out and so it's important to have that and i think for me when it comes to game testing um you know it can be 
super, super time consuming to try and, you know, figure out like how to break the game and how to do these different things or whatever. Um, but from my experience, it's absolutely worth it because those games, you know, where, where, where they come out and like it's, you know, it's, it's pretty much good, you know, from the beginning then it goes on to do well because the actual core of the gameplay, you know, typically is pretty good. Um, you know, mm-hmm. when you have all these game designers and, and game developers, you know, actually working on something and you have a proven concept that the gameplay itself is going to be great as long as it's not inhibited by these, you know, blatant issues that could have been fixed if you had spent enough time during that QA phase. Yeah. So um, I, I, I think I already mentioned this to Gray, I'm not sure, or, or, or you know, a long time ago, but when I got hired in as Activision QA, and this is back in 2010, this was the hierarchy which my um, the QA um, um, person who hired us, the, 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 Q, the QA um, recruiter, he basically said, here's a hierarchy of the development studios. You got CEO, you get the producers, developers all up here, right? And then you get the artists and stuff like that. And then he said, it's, because it's an order of importance. Right. And then he says, security guard, no, building managers, parking <laughs> attendant, I see where we're janitors, going. <laughs> all trash QA. See, so, so he basically said, do not talk to anyone unless they talk to you. Do not look them in the eyes until they, in, until they, look, at, in, until they look at you. It's because okay. you're literally treated like shit, but they are literally the reason why these games work. It's because the QA people, they, like, they, are, they are the literal soul of the development team, right? It's because who, you, are you going to release a game that doesn't work? Because mm. if you do, you're going to get this. <laughs> this is cyberpunk 2077 chat this is cyberpunk yeah thanks for checking out this segment of the project egg Row podcast if you like what we do here please like share subscribe hit the notification bell and you will know next time when we go live we do go live every saturday at 8 p.m once again we are just getting started tons of more video to come thanks and we'll see you guys next time